Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to create a sky replacement including the reflection on the water. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you, so maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for free. Now here's a disclaimer before we get started and that is if you do this a lot, this is much easier with Luminar AI. Also, if you have a lot of rippling in your water, there's going to be a problem because Affinity Photo can't really create that. Good. Now let's get started. You can see here we have two pictures, our landscape and our sky. You want to do two more duplicates of the sky. So right click on the sky layer and go to duplicate and then do this a second time. Now we're going to rename that to sky and then the second one to ref for reflection and the last one to amp for ambient like so. Good. Now that we have done this, we need to create a selection for the sky. So select your background layer and then go to your selection brush and simply paint in the sky like this. Now the next step is very important. Go to refine like so and then zoom in here and make very sure that the selection around the finer details is actually good and you have especially the trees selected in a nice and clean way because otherwise you will end up with a kind of halo around that areas where you have the sky being in a very different look especially if you have these sunset skies then the mountains in the foreground and this will give you kind of this glowing edge around your horizon. That's not great. So this looks pretty good. Let's click on apply here and we have created this selection. Now what you want to do here is to go to select and then grow and shrink and still grow this a little bit. You can see here how this gets bigger. I'm going with the mouse over that number area, but not touching it. Just mouse over it and then rotate your mouse wheel and you can see this changes the value. So let's go like this and then click on apply. Go again to select and to feather this time and again feather this in an equal amount. Let's go three pixels here like so. So we have now created the mask for our sky. So select the sky layer and you want to turn this on and then create a mask for that. Now here's a very important part. You need to look out for that the mask is sitting on your layer in a way where if you have an individual mask, don't drag it on where you get the long blue line, drag it on where you get this short blue line because you can see with the long blue line you get this problem here with the blending. This doesn't look good and it creates these kind of very strange colors here. We don't want to have that. So what you need to do is when you drag on the mask is to make sure you put it in between the thumbnail and the name of the layer so you get that short blue line and then you can see that this is working a lot better as a mask. So we already have created that. Now the next thing we need to do is to make a mask down here for our water area. Now here is something to think about to understand. Don't select all of the water, only select the parts of the water where you can see the sky because otherwise you're going to end up with clouds that are floating in front of your mountains and that doesn't really make sense, right? Okay, so again let's click on our background layer and then we zoom in a little bit like so, go to our selection brush and then simply paint in that area here so we have a nice selection and again of course you want to go to refine like so and then go over these areas here like so and make sure that you have a nice mask around these areas. You have to go in this case because we have all this wave movement here and we have this kind of jaggedy edge over all of the parts here. So you can see I'm going around the reflection of the mountain like so and this is helping us to get a better result but I will show you a second trick to get an even better result in one second. So we have done this, click on apply, this is our mask now 
and I'm going to actually expand this again. Go to select and grow. Grow this a little bit like so. Again, three pixels. This really depends on the resolution of your image. So don't go with three pixels. Go with what looks good for you. Again, go to select and feather selection. Apply. And this is the mask for our sky. Again, do the same thing. Create a mask here. I will turn on the sky. So sky right now is in the wrong position. We have to fix that. I will pull off the mask again. And what we need to do here is that, of course, we need to flip the sky over first. So you want to go here to arrange with your reflection layer selected and to flip vertically. So now it's upside down. And now what we are going to do is use the move tool, hold the shift key. So this is moving in a straight line up and down and just move it down here where we feel it's okay, right? So now we can pull our mask on again in the same way in between the thumbnail and the name of the layer like so. So that is already pretty good. What you want to look out for is that these are kind of similar to be sure that you move only the layer of the image but not the mask you want to select the reflection layer and then when you have the move tool selected click here to lock children like so and now i can move the image without moving the mask this is extremely helpful to get nice results move this a little bit lower like so and then what you want to do is to stretch this out a little bit so the reflection looks a bit different than the rest of your image, right? Okay, so now that we have created this, as you can see, we have actually a pretty nice selection here. Now what we need to do next is to adjust all these layers so everything looks good. That is pretty important, right? Okay, so this is where our ambient layer comes into play, this one. I've just turned that on. Move that over your picture, going to stretch it out a little bit like so. And then what we are going to do is to go to filter, blur, average. And this will give you an average color of everything that's in here. And now you're going to blend this with soft light blend mode. This is a little bit dark. So what we're going to do is to adjust this a little bit, let's say 56%, but you can really adjust that to taste whatever feels good to you, right? Okay, now here come the next steps. You go to the reflection, it's a normal blend mode. You want to reduce this a little bit so the background is also showing through a little bit the original reflection on the water. So let's go with 57% here. You can adjust this to taste. Now the next thing you need to do is to go and create an adjustment layer here for brightness and contrast. Don't use curves for this. Use brightness and contrast because this works different with your picture. So I will reduce my contrast a little bit. I will also, let's see, maybe make the brightness a little bit brighter for my reflection like so. And again, now at these points, you are going with your eyes. You're going with your taste. Select the sky layer. Also create an adjustment for brightness and contrast. Look at the contrast you have in the original picture and then adapt the sky contrast to the landscape contrast. You can, of course, also adapt the landscape contrast if you want to have more contrast in that. So in this case, I'm going to give my sky less contrast also make it brighter like so. Let's zoom out here. That looks pretty cool because I don't want to make my picture too dark. Maybe give it a little bit more contrast. Um, let's see. Well, actually, this looks pretty good. Okay, nice. So now that we have that, we can actually maybe move this up a little bit so we have a little bit nicer sky. This looks good. Okay. In this case, we need to move the reflection down. So this is giving us a similar effect like so. So in this case, now we come more into the creative part of our activities here. Now you can see down here, you get a little bit of this area where we have a little bit of sky in this area and it doesn't look too good, right? So what you want to do in this case is Click on your reflection layer and then on your keyboard, press Control G to put that into a group. 
and then move this so it sits on top of your background layer like so. So this again is now the reflection group I will call it like so and you want to now open up your blend ranges like this click here once on the right side underline composition ranges so you get one of these handles here in the middle and then pull down the left handle over here and you can also move that in a little bit and you can see what this is doing is that it is removing the reflection uh, you can see here if you look at that area down here you can see that this is removing part of the reflection in the area where we have the darker parts from our mountain reflection and so this gives us a cleaner better blend with our original mountain basically right okay pretty cool good next thing we are going to do is to create in this curve uh, in this case a curve adjustment for our background layer the original landscape and in this case what i'm going to do is i will first of all adjust my master curve make everything a little bit darker so it blends with both sides better and then i'm going to the red channel because we have a sunset we want to have a little bit more redness in all of our background so let's go here for the curve and push this up a little bit this is up to taste go to a value that looks good this looks okay to my eyes so i would say right now we have created a pretty nice replacement for our sky you can see up here there's maybe also a little bit of a problem we can also fix that go to our mask and take a brush like so and we have here black and white that we can paint into the mask let's go over here let's see um, this looks good we want to have a softer brush maybe reduce the opacity a little bit maybe make the brush a little bit bigger and then I can simply paint in these areas over here until I feel like yes this is good and you can go as detailed as you want to with this spend as much time as you feel like it needs to look good for your result if there is anything too problematic you can also simply paint it out and then basically hide it behind your horizon that's always a possibility be behind the replaced skies what I meant to say there you go so that's pretty cool you can see here you can simply fix that on everything that stands out you can see here this needs to go in the other direction so there's a little bit of fixing like I said if you have luminar AI um, this is done with several clicks so it's much faster if you want to do this often but of course in Affinity Photo you have a lot more control over what you're doing and you can put it exactly where you want with the exact look you want to have so in this case of course this gives you a lot more control over your artistic process one last thing before we go is that with our reflection image you want to create a live filter for Gaussian blur preserve alpha that's important and then go in here and blur this to taste so this is really up to how blurry you want to have it you can also leave it clean without any blur but I find that often a little bit of blur looks better on the reflection that's it thank you very much for watching the tutorial and see you in my next video bye